he's just a hack. He's just an absolute hack. And he gets his ass kicked by his teammates every week. It's just, you know, it's terrible. It's just terrible. Penn State versus Auburn was a game that I was watching very, very closely. Man, Penn State was not effing around. They were playing angry in this game. They were playing with ferocity to prove that they are not just a 2-0 and Penn State team that's going to go on to lose later on. This Penn State team has shown us a lot of signs of life. The difficulty of their schedule remains to be seen if they can finish it out when they have to play tougher Big Ten opponents. That Purdue game, I think, set the tone for this season. But most importantly, the performance that they put up defensively and running the football against Auburn is a strong indicator that Penn State could do a little bit of damage in the Big Ten. Not going to win it, but they could do a little bit of damage. I'm starting this now, and I, I think that some other people were were saying it. I am fully in on the Nick Singleton hype train. The plays that that man made, actually that kid, he's a freshman. He's a true freshman. That he made in this game are... Jonathan Taylor, Saquon Barkley ask. The guy has the traits, the explosiveness, the highlight play ability to be by next season a top five running back in college football as a true sophomore. His final stat line ends up being 12 yards a carry, 10 for 124, and two touchdowns. He didn't even get that many touches. Like he was getting rotated. With multiple guys, they have so many different running backs that they work in. Like Katron Allen, who's the other freshman, who's the other guy who had two touchdowns in this game. He didn't even get that many touches, and he still put up 124 yards. And I I speak even further to the positivity of, of Nick Singleton and his capabilities because of the fact that he doesn't need to be overutilized. There tends to be, when you have a talented young freshman like Nick Singleton, who was a top running back recruit, to overuse them, and then they get banged up, they start to get have injuries, and by the time they get to the NFL or their final year, they're overused. They've got like a 1,000-plus carries on them. But he's not being used that much right now. And by the end of the season, he could be used more. They could be saving him for, for bigger games. He is starting to hit his stride, and his confidence has to be through the roof. That offensive confidence has to be through the roof. And kind of similar to what I was talking about with Bo Nix, very different quarterbacks. Sean Clifford is a guy where if he doesn't have to do too much, he is the perfect man for the job. Keeps the offense ahead of schedule, keeps the ball moving. When they're in third down situations, he can pick up nice chunk yard, yard plays. For some weird, stupid reason, they were using him as a runner. They also used him as a receiver, which was hilarious to watch that they called that play because Sean Clifford is a pretty mid-tier athlete at best. But his effort and his impact in this game is what you should be asking Sean Clifford to do, which is when you're not running the football, pick up a third and five. Get us a chunk play on on first down and and get us a 15-yard pass. It's kind of weird to see that he had 9.4 yards per attempt because that's just so not Sean Clifford. But overall, that Penn State team is looking a lot better than we anticipated. TJ Finley, though, sucks. I I said this going into the game. You know, real shocker that my prediction comes true in this one, that TJ Finley is not good. He had a lot of nice plays, and that's why there's similar. Again, I I don't know why I keep bringing up Bo Nix. People like to talk about the guys that can extend plays with their legs and, and make crazy highlight plays and TJ Finley is one of those guys he's six foot seven he's a massive dude he is a huge quarterback with a good arm a strong arm and he can make those you know those head scratching plays where it's third and long fourth and long whatever and you think that the play is done but he rushes up the middle sees a gap and picks up a first down he's that type of a guy outside of those plays though his accuracy is bad his decision making is bad We saw that with the turnovers that he had. Um, He was getting nailed often by this Penn State pass rush. I really would love to know what the hell 
is the deal with Zach Calzada. I admittedly do not know that situation. And if anyone else is privy to that situation, I would love to hear why they won't go to Zach Calzada because neither him or Robbie Ashford are getting the job done. They're just not at some point, And maybe it's injury. Maybe it's stubbornness. I don't know what it is, but you got to put the kid in at some point because the results of the first three games from both Robbie Ashford and TJ Finley are not starting caliber. They are not starting caliber college football quarterbacks. I don't know if Zach Calzada is going to provide any spark for, for Auburn's offense. He might not do anything, but at the very least, you got to give him a chance. You got to at least try to see what differently can be done if Zach Calzada is in that game and he's the starting quarterback. Again, I have no idea what that situation is. If anyone knows, feel free to comment, but I have no idea why they won't put him in, and it's starting to frustrate the hell out of me seeing TJ Finley make stupid mistake after stupid mistake uh, and then eventually switching over to Robbie Ashford, who also makes mistakes but gets occasional chunk rushing play. That's not how you produce offense. That's why he only scored 12 points in that game.